Okay, so the uh, purpose of this recording is uh, to do a quick review of the theorems um, from last lesson, the ones that we discovered uh, through the GSP, uh, and that review is going to be um, through the examples one and two, um, and then to introduce <coughs> uh, three theorems for today's lesson. Uh, these are in the Carnegie um, pack uh, in the summary, um, but the way Carnegie approaches them is to do them by proof, and so I'm just going to do a quick explanation of them and then include some examples that use them um, just to supplement the Carnegie resource. Okay, so the first of the theorems today uh, is the tangent radius theorem, and the theorem says that if you draw a radius um, to a point of tangency, that that is going to um, <clears throat> intersect at 90 degrees. This is in fact a small um, extension of the, one of the theorems that we learned from the GSP. Uh, if I were to extend the radius to make it a diameter, uh, then you should see that the measure of the arc is going to be 180 degrees because it's a semicircle, and this is just an inscribed angle. And so that's the reason it's 90 degrees. It's half of its intercepted arc. Uh, you'll hopefully recall that an inscribed angle is an angle that has its uh, vertex on uh, the circumference of the circle. So that's the first of our theorems and a bit of review from the last one. Uh, the second takes uh, this angle over here, so angle uh, BPC, or um, as I've labeled it, uh, angle Z. Um, and what you can see from uh, angle Z is it's not a central angle. So this is circle O, and, uh, and so this angle uh, is not equal to its intercepted arc because it's not central. Um, it's also not inscribed because the vertex is not on the circumference. Uh, and so this is an angle in the interior of the circle, and we have the chord-chord theorem. That's because obviously the angle is created by two chords. Um, and simply the, the theorem, which essentially amounts to a formula, is that the measure of the uh, angle in the interior formed by two chords uh, is equal to half of the sum of the measures of the intercepted arcs. Okay, and so uh, x degrees is the measure of arc AD, uh, y degrees is the measure of arc BC, and z is the average of those two. Um, <clears throat> similarly, we have an outer angle theorem, and so I've used the same thing as uh, zx and y. In this case, we're attempting to find find angle Z, or BPF, or a APC, any one of those. Um, and the formula is just a slight variation. In this case, since we have the um, angle in the exterior, so outside of the circle, um, it is half of, this time, the difference between the intercepted arcs. Um, and what we do is we take uh, arc AC, represented by x degrees, um, subtract um, arc BF, which is uh, y degrees in measure. Uh, we find the difference of those two, the further arc minus the nearer arc, um, and take half of that. Okay, so those are the three theorems for today's lesson. And what I'm going to do is take you through um, some examples now. Um, you could, if you wish, uh, uh, at this point pause the video and go ahead and attempt these on your own, um, and then watch the solutions. Alternatively, you can just uh, watch me um, walk you through, or have me walk you through each of the examples, and I'll explain along the way. So uh, this is a little bit of review. These are going to focus on uh, the theorems from the first lesson. So we've been asked to find x. We've been asked to find arc GC, uh, arc um, FG. Uh, remember, these are uh, denote minor arcs, less than 180 degrees. And lastly, we've been asked to find angle FGC. Okay, so hopefully what you realize straight away um, is that uh, angle X is congruent to uh, the 20 degrees, and that is because uh, both of those are uh, angles or inscribed angles that intercept the same arc. And so they are both intercepting arc GC, and therefore you can tell that uh, angle X, or rather, uh, we don't need to say angle X in this case, uh, x is equal to 20 degrees. Uh, the second thing we can do is hopefully you realize that this uh, angle GHC, the given angle, is an inscribed angle, and that means that this measure uh, is half of the intercepted arc, or if we reverse that, 
than arc GC. Uh, the arc is twice the measure of the inscribed angle, and so arc GC must be 40 degrees. Um, the next of the theorems that uh, we need to uh, uh, realize uh, is that um, uh, we have F through E, which is our circle center, through to C. So FC is a diameter, and because it's a diameter, that means arc FGC, so that's a major arc, is in fact a semicircle. So FGC is 180 degrees. We know that GC is 40 degrees of that, and so that means arc FG has uh, 140 degrees remaining. Okay, that also in fact gives us the ability to find um, uh, angle FGC, which was the third, uh, the fourth and final piece of what we needed to find. Um, and that is, uh, hopefully you realize that that is an inscribed angle. And so the vertex of angle FGC lies on the circle. It is half of its intercepted arc. It intercepts arc FHC, which is of course the other half of our semicircle, which means it's half of 180 degrees and angle FGC is 90 degrees. Okay, moving on to example two, we have to find X and Y given that A is a point of tangency. So that could be relevant for a couple of different uh, reasons. It could be relevant for our first theorem today that a radius to a point of tangency is at 90 degrees. In this case, you can see it's circle D, and so we do not have a radius to a point of tangency. The other reason that a uh, point of tangency is significant is because it's a point on the circumference of the circle, which essentially means we have angle X, which is this whole angle over here, um, is an inscribed angle, and it's going to equal half of the measure of arc CA. Okay, so uh, we need to find out, first of all, what arc CA is, and once again, we're going to use an inscribed angle, uh, angle um, ABC is inscribed, that means it's half of the measure of in its intercepted arc, which means arc AC, which is the arc that angle ABC intersects, if you were to extend those sides, you can see that clearly, um, is going to be double because the inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. So that puts that at 120 degrees, that puts, uh, we have arc BC at 140 degrees, and that also allows us to find arc BA uh, by saying 360 less 140 less 120, is going to give us 100 degrees. This is one of the ways. There are other ways we could do this. Um, and uh, we then have uh, y equal to 50 degrees because it's an inscribed angle, so it must equal half of its intercepted arc. And similarly, uh, x will equal 60 degrees because it's an inscribed angle and therefore is half of its intercepted arc. All right, so we're going to move on to the next three examples and the next three examples all use the theorems from today's lesson. Um, so we're going to find angle Y, uh, relatively straightforward as long as you recognize um, that this is the exterior angle theorem uh, and you must make sure you set it up correctly. So the correct setup would be the, uh, the exterior angle or angle APC uh, equal to um, half of the difference between the intercepted arc um, which is 123 degrees on the far side, minus y, and now it's just a little bit of algebra to solve for y. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2, 64 is equal to, uh, on the right-hand side, the 2 times the half will cancel, 123 less y, take the y to that side and the 64 to the other side, <coughs> and we have got uh, I want to say 59 degrees, okay? Uh, all right, so that gives us the measure of uh, uh, arc BF or Y. Okay, moving down to the next one, we've been asked to find both X and Y. So um, uh, in this particular case, finding uh, X is going to use the chord-chord theorem, the one introduced um, a few minutes ago. Um, and so once again, just watch out for the setup. Um, the formula is set up to give you uh, the angle formed by the two chords. And so we need to say in this case, 85 degrees is equal to half of the sum of the intercepted arcs, 115 plus 
x. Uh, and once again, we'll solve for x. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. That's going to give me 170 degrees equals 115 plus x. And then we will have x equal to 170 minus 115, which is going to give us 55 degrees. Okay, so we now have arc GB, which equals x, which is 55 degrees. Uh, what we need to be able to do at this point is to be able to find y. Uh, and so a little more complicated, maybe not quite as obvious as the other one. And so we're going to apply a little bit of what we've, uh, what we've learned before. The other thing that we do need to pay careful attention to, which you may not uh, have spotted, is that G, uh, GOC is in fact a diameter. And that of course means that uh, arc GBC is a semicircle. And if arc GBC is a semicircle, then what that should allow us to know is that arc BC over here uh, is going to be the supplement of angle X. And so that should give us 125 degrees. So the sum of those two is 180. We also know that uh, GOC is a line segment. And so um, we have 95 degrees as its uh, supplement uh, angles, adjacent angles on a straight line. And now we're in a position to find angle Y. And so we are able to say 95 degrees is equal to 1 half Y plus 125. And now we can, uh, as we did before, uh, isolate Y in order to solve. So I'll times both sides by 2. So I have 190 equals y plus 125, and therefore uh, uh, y is going to be equal to 190 less 125, uh, and that's going to be 65. Okay, and now quickly on to the last one. Um, here um, it's the same theorem, it's the um, uh, exterior or outer angle theorem. And so x is going to equal half of the uh, difference between the intercepted arcs. Just rewrite that. Half of the difference. Um, what appears to be a problem here is that we do not have the um, remaining arc. What you hopefully realize is that um, arc AB is 130, and that means the remainder uh, is whatever's left over uh, when we take 130 away from 360 and so that is going to be 230 degrees uh, is our major arc uh, AB of course if we needed to name that we might say uh, BDA of course you need three letters in order to name a major arc and so that gives us the missing uh, piece of what we needed uh, and so um, 230 degrees minus 130 degrees x is half of the measure of the difference between those two. And so that is going to be uh, 50 degrees. Okay, so just a very brief um, introduction to the theorems for today's lesson. Um, and you can, of course, use this as a resource and a review of the theorems covered in lesson one as well.